Peter Bogdanovich, an auteur that emerged during the American New Wave, impresses with his debut film, Targets, in 1968. All the good movies have been made. The film holds a dual focus, a lament for Hollywood's golden age as the classic era of gothic horror shambled to its coffin, while also capturing the real-world horrors of the decade, assassinations, unchecked PTSD from the Vietnam War, and the restless disillusionment of the younger generation. I'll take it. I always wanted a gun like this. Horror legend Boris Karloff plays Byron Orlock in what is a semi-autobiographical role. Following a test screening of the Teller, a real Karloff vehicle that also starred Dick Miller, and a very young and handsome Jack Nicholson, Orlock abruptly announces his retirement from the business. He has become disheartened in his old age. The job has lost its joy. Why bother making gothic horror anymore, he digresses, when the modern idea of Teller is what headlines the news each morning. On the other side of town, another plotline begins to lock and load. Young Bobby Thompson seems to live a perfectly ordinary life. Good home, loving wife, nice family, and a nice car. But behind that quiet, honest face is a ticking time bomb. Bobby eventually snaps and begins a wild round of GTA, starting with his family, and then heading out to the unsuspecting public. The two stories eventually intertwine for the movie's nail-biting climax at a drive-in theatre, where Bobby intends to wreak havoc at Byron Orlock's final public appearance. Targets may not be a conventional horror by the usual standards, but indeed, is that not the point? The late 60s were brimming with unrest. Ghostly goblins and goblin ghosts weren't going to cut it anymore. Tragically, the concept of the film was inspired by true events, namely the mass murderer Charles Whitman and his 1966 assault on the University of Texas. Orlock seems to have a point. When you're bombarded with the horrors of reality on a constant basis, stories of crumbling old spooky castles appear all the more fake, a strange fantasy. However, fantasy plays an important role in Targets itself. Bobby's seemingly perfect life reflects an infantile vision of the American dream. The set design of his home is purposefully fake, like Tim Burton's hyper-stereotypical suburbias, but on a Roger Corman budget. But the cheapness adds to the final effect. It's all too clean, too bright, and also very claustrophobic, suffocating Bobby without him even realising it. Bogdanovich does a swell job of threading the two plotlines together, while keeping the tension ever brewing on the pot. Any time Bobby is on screen, you're on edge, because he could unleash hell at literally any moment, never breaking his horrifically calm disposition. A simple moment of Bobby taking a well-earned break from killing to eat a sandwich results in edge-of-your-seat nerves as he spies a group of kids playing nearby. Oh, don't do it, Bobby. It all builds to a finale that is equal parts exciting Shocking, upsetting, and goddamn terrifying. <laughs> As a horror fan, I must turn my attention to Mr. Boris Karloff. This is a very meta film. The inclusion of his clips from his past works, The Teller, and The Criminal Code, invariably link Karloff and Orlok together. Like his character, Karloff had worked his way through a decade of Corman's productions, before being offered a script that would be a total change of pace for him. In the film, he turns down the script and the writer, played by Bogdanovich, playing a character named after Target's uncredited co-writer Sammy Fuller. So, amusingly, the film that Orlock turns down is essentially the film we are currently watching. Why? In reality, Karloff was not ashamed of his legacy. In fact, the very opposite is true. He was proud, and had no intentions of retiring, right up to the very end. During the filming of Targets, Boris Karloff was 80 years old, and in poor health. 
having to rest in a wheelchair and use an oxygen mask between takes due to rheumatoid arthritis and emphysema. Good old Boris wouldn't let this stop him, no, and he delivered a performance that is among his best. He was only contracted to work two days, but he was such a fan of the script that, despite his declining health, he offered his services free of charge for extra scenes and days of shooting. Who is that tapping at my chamber door? It is such a delight to watch Karloff play a friendly and charming gentleman, as opposed to a lumbering monster. This role gives him a chance to work in some great moments of comedy. Ah! Have you gone mad? I was having a nightmare. I opened my eyes, the first thing I see is Byron Orlock. Very funny, very funny. Oh. Oh, oh. Whilst leaving room for his dramatic chops. Once upon a time, many, many years ago, a rich merchant in Baghdad sent his servant to the marketplace to buy provisions. Boris Karloff sadly passed away a short time after, in early 1969, but luckily he had the chance to view the finished picture before he passed. A number of his films continued to be released posthumously into the 70s, but I see Targets as a true bookend of his career. A chance to reflect on his immense body of work, while providing something new, shedding his monstrous skin and stepping out of the shadows like a goddamn cowboy, off to go bitch-slap a real villain, before departing off into the sunset. <laughs>